Good evening. Thank you so much for joining us. This is the main news on Kamni TV. Here are the top stories making headlines in our news tonight. Former President Edgar Lungu petitions the Lusaka High Court to reinstate his benefits. FDD President Edith Nawakwi labels the UPND as incompetent economic managers. The Zambia police cautions PF Vice President Given Luwinda against inciting civil unrest. And in international news, hundreds of Kenyans trapped by raging floods. Death toll reaches 170. And in sports news, Rennes denied late Europa League equalizer due to little known rule. My name is Sylvia Zulu. Do join me with the details after this. Introducing Darren B, a touch of class. Are you looking for the perfect place to elevate your style and glam up? Look no further. Darren B Touch of Class is your one-stop destination for hair and makeup transformation. Walk into Darren B and walk out feeling like a star. Your transformation starts here. Call us on 0772-870-588 or WhatsApp on 0972-049213 to book your appointment today. Payments are made via mobile money or point of sale machine. Strictly no cash payments. We are located along Mossy Road in Ibex Hill, fourth close on the left after Kalikiliki Police Post. At Darren B, we pride ourselves on our team of dedicated and trained personnel ready to pamper both women and children. Darren B is open seven days a week from 0720 hours to 1740 hours. From trendy hairstyles and stylish makeovers to flawless makeup, we do it all. Darren B, a touch of class. Thank you so much for staying with us. And now the news in detail. Sadiq Youths under the Southern Africa Youth Forum have called on youths to petition their lawmakers to pass the Tobacco Control Bill to regulate tobacco and its products. Speaking during a press conference in Lusaka, Sadiq Youth Parliamentarian Blessings Katenge says the country is losing a lot of lives due to tobacco. Meanwhile, Africa Tobacco Control Champion Given Capolio has called on teachers to educate learners on the negative effects of drug abuse and tobacco. Here's a report. In Zambia, tobacco is grown by about 18,000 farmers, comprising 17,800 small-scale farmers and about 200 commercial farmers. Apart from the large number of farmers producing tobacco, employment is also created for input suppliers and transporters. On a sorry side, tobacco kills about 7,142 Zambians every year, causing the loss of 104,611 years of life. 60 percent of the annual deaths from tobacco are among individuals under the age of 70, and according to the World Health Organization, 800 yearly deaths are due to secondhand smoke exposure. This is why the Sadiq youth under the Southern Africa Youth Forum have called upon young people across the Southern African region to petition their lawmakers to put in place policies that will provide the regression of the importation and use of tobacco and its products to reduce on the health hazards that come with it. Speaking during a press conference on the launch of the Think, Stop and Act Youth for Tobacco Control campaign in Lusaka, Sadiq Youth Parliamentarian Blessings Katenge says the number of tobacco-related deaths need immediate attention from all stakeholders, including parliamentarians, whose role is to make laws in this regard. Now we actually have young people as young as 20 years old coming with hypertension, coming with cancer, all because of tobacco consumption. And this really is something that we urgently need to address. Mino, Africa Tobacco Control Champion Given Capolio, has called for men to the education system to facilitate for the training of teachers on how to educate learners on issues of drug abuse, especially tobacco, which is responsible for thousands of deaths annually. Times have changed and our syllabus must begin to reflect such changes. I know there are reforms that are going around in the syllabus. It's about when those submissions begin, are we going forward and saying right now tobacco is an issue? How do we find a way of infusing it in our curriculum? How do we find a way of infusing it in our in, in, in our educational systems? But also more deliberate if they if the changing the curriculum is um, a bit far fetched, is targeting um, teachers targeting um, 
targeting the people that we've entrusted with educating our future training them in such knowledge so that even when they teach on the same um, substance abuse topic they go a mile further and then educate the learners on oh now there are these substances that are on the market that are deliberately targeting you other youths who attended the launch of the campaign underscored the need for police change in order to control the use of tobacco and these products. Youth involvement and participation in this conversation is key towards driving the integration of the firm recommendation of tobacco control in our national policies. Youths are at the center of this conversation. Youths are the target of the tobacco industry because youth are the majority of our population. Statistics show that 62% of Zambia so that means the tobacco industry has 62% of our population right in their target scope. And if we do not do anything about it, then we are definitely fighting a loser. So I think that as young people, we need to, to use the tools that we have. Trends evolve and things have evolved through music, through art, through poetry. We need to have these things. I remember the other day I wanted to make a post about tobacco control and I was looking for a sound. So you know on TikTok on how you have a sound and there was no song. There was no song that spoke to tobacco control. And this is, like, this is the age where music is everywhere. Young people are listening to music. How do we not have a song that speaks to tobacco control in Zambia? And this just shows how advocacy seems to be happening, but advocacy is not happening. Vincent Piri for Kamne TV News, Lusaka. Media Institute of Southern Africa, MISA, Zambia, has called on President Hakainde Hichilema not to hesitate to assert to their access to information bill into law so that it can be optionalized as soon as possible. MISA Zambia National Director Austin Kayanda says once asserted, it must be enforced with immediate effect. On Wednesday, December 13th, the Parliament passed the Access to Information Bill and now awaits President Hakainde Hichilema's signature to be made a law. Mr. Zambia also appreciates the commitment and the joint efforts by all stakeholders who played a role during the third reading um, in Parliament. It has now entered a crucial stage awaiting presidential assent after successfully going through all the stages. Well, access to information is a fundamental right that empowers citizens to make informed decisions and hold public holders accountable and strengthen democratic uh, governance. Mr. Zambia acknowledges the government's recognition of this importance of the right and commends parliament for translating uh, this recognition into uh, concrete action. We are recommending that the president should assent to this bill as soon as possible. And not only that, after setting the bill, we want the government to put mechanisms so that they can operationalize the, the, uh, the, 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 the working of this bill itself. Because we don't want to be like in Malawi where the uh, the, the bill uh, was enacted and uh, it was only put into use after four years. We want the bill to start operating now. President Hakainde Hichilema has healed musicians who sang UPND campaign songs before the 2021 general elections. Mr. Hichilema says their music contributed to the UPND's victory as their songs gave the Zambian people courage and hope in his party. The head of state explains that if it had not been for them, the party would have lost elections after which many party supporters, including him, would have been jailed by the Patriotic Front. Speaking, when he met musicians who drummed up support for the UPND in 2021, President Hichilema wondered what the Patriotic Front intends to do in government, which they failed to do in 10 years. And I must tell you, guys, we used to move in the night because every time we moved, we were blocked. So we designed, defined a method of moving in the night. And we used to play your music, your music. And that gave us courage, energy to carry on. So thank you for that. Thank you so much. <laughs> Another 
another angle of thanking you. Your music sent the message. Encouraged people under a brutal regime. People forget what, how they brutalize citizens. And when they say, Ali will up, I said, what? <laughs> <laughs> to come and do what? To continue the lynching. So people gathered courage. You campaigned through your music. We campaigned using your music. You campaigned through your music. You gave people courage. And you and the 2.8 million people plus. I say plus because I know other votes were nicked away. Turned out on that day. In that month, in 2021, to vote for change for UPND, councillors, members of parliament, council chairpersons, mayors, and this fellow speaking here, the president. Advocates for People's Prosperity, APP, has condemned United Party for National Development member Bene Hachombwa for threatening to protest against Secretary to Cabinet Patrick Kangwa. Speaking during a press conference Thursday, Mr. Hachombwa threatened to protest against Mr. Kangwa over the continued existence of civil servants linked to the Patriotic Front. APP National Spokesperson Richard Peary, however, says Mr. Hachombo's sentiments are baseless as civil servants are non-partisan. Mr. Peary has wondered how Mr. Hachombo will be identifying the said PF affiliated civil servants. More in the following report. What's happening today is that the UPND has no policies. That's why they are, they are blaming the civil servants. The civil servants. That's why they are blaming them. It's because they don't have policies. If they have policies, then the, the civil servant can perform. But if they are just calling, no, we have, they have failed to perform, it's because they, they are PF, no, they, because they are what, they are what. That will not help the UPND. And that will, cannot solve the problem of this country. What the UPND should do is to bring policies that can alleviate the poverty standard of this country. So that those civil servants who are serving, either in the top islands and in the lower islands, they can adhere to those policies. To warn uh, Vene Achom. For this time, I want to warn Vene Achom. Uh, but comrade, let me tell you, if you have not been given a job by Aka in the Ichidema, it's your own fault. You should not uh, compare government and the political parties. Opposition Citizens First Party spokesperson Frank Sichone is disturbed to learn that another group of Zambia Consolidated Copper Mine ex workers have not been paid their pension despite the assurance by the UPND government that we will not see anyone sleep at the bus station waiting for pensions. The former miners are sleeping at the intercity bus terminus and came to see President Hichilema from the Copper Belt. However, their efforts have not yielded the desire results. Mr. Sichone has advised the head of state to attend to the plight of the ex-miners urgently. In August this year, while addressing Mpulungwa residents in Lusaka's Mandev constituency, President Haka Indeshirema recounted some of his government's achievements, among them paying off all retirees. Lucky for those who served in the public service, but for those in the private sector is a sorry side. Barely 24 hours ago, Kamne TV aired a story where ex Konkola copper mine workers claimed that they have not been paid their dues since 2019, some of whom 2020. Uh, information Minister Baran Jokobat, to Ariba Pere MPI, Tamuana Kunoku State House Tabesa Co. Because 
No, by file land our minister, ne file chita, file chita pa ground. In a latest such incident, former Zambia Consolidated Copper Mines SCCM workers who retired in 1992 have as well not been paid despite the Supreme Court ruling in their favor after a legal battle that started in 1995. Seeing that their engagements with various stakeholders have yielded no result, the affected miners traveled to Lusaka from the Copper Belt to seek an audience with President Haga Indeshirema, which has not been successful, and are spending their nights at intercity bus terminals. Sometimes But this case Nga maipisha ku, ku, kuliva vice president ku cabinet office hivi madam Njerisani na bose kulia na wakabuswe. Balai miya kichachi nefivalea na fishinka. Tebu fiyo. No, Citizens First Party spokesperson Frank Stone has advised the head of state not to see politics in this but attend to the plight of the ex-miners agently. When they went to community house, they were told that uh, they cannot see the president simply because that is a private property. They can only see the president at, um, at state house. And this is the reason why I've been saying that the president has to move to state house because he's a public figure. And there is no way you can be, they can tell them to just go and see him at, um, at, at state house. The president has to be available to see the people. And uh, if the president is busy uh, to see these people who voted for him, then he needs to be assigned one minister. For now, all these retirees need is the attention of President Haka Indeshirema so that they can pour out their hearts to the father of the nation. Vincent Piri for Kamne TV News, Lusaka. The Zambia Police Service has warned members of the Edgar Lungu Laid Patriotic Front function over the suspected intentions to destabilize the peace and security of the country. Zambia Police spokesperson Ray Hamonga says the service is in receipt of credible information that may lead to possible acts by the group violating the peace of the country. Mr. Hamonga cited PF Vice President Given Lubinda as the people behind planned civil disobedience. Mr. Hamonga says the service has been closely monitoring activities associated with the function and it has come to its attention that certain individuals within this group may be planning actions that could pose a threat to police order, to public order and safety. The police service is issuing a warning to the members of the Periodic Front Party faction led by Mr. Given Lovinda as we have received credible information indicating possible intentions to destabilize the peace and security in our country. The police has been closely monitoring activities associated with this faction and it has come to our attention that certain individuals within this group may be planning actions that could pose a threat to public order and safety. Such actions are not only unlawful, but also undermine the democratic values and the rule of law that our society upholds. The Zambia Police Service, as a law enforcement agency, is committed to ensuring the safety and security of all citizens, and any attempts to disrupt the peace will be made with the full force of the law. The police will take all necessary measures to prevent and address any potential acts of violence or attempts to destabilize the peace. We urge members of the Patriotic Front Party faction led by Mr. Lubinda to adhere to the principles of peaceful and lawful expression of their grievances. Resorting to violence or any form of disabilizing activities will not be tolerated and those found in violation of the law will be held accountable. Former Ministry of Infrastructure, Housing and Urban Development Permanent Secretary Charles Mushota has pleaded not guilty to one count of willful failure to comply with the law and procedure in the procurement of the ministry's building along United Nations Avenue valued at over 5 million United States dollars. The offense is alleged to have happened between November 1, 2016 and May 31, 2021 in Lusaka. Former Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Infrastructure, Housing and Urban Development, 
Charles Mashota has denied ever committing an offence of willful failure to comply with the law and procedure in the procurement of the ministry's building along United Nations Avenue valued at over $5 million. Allegations are that Mr. Mshota, serving in his capacity as permanent secretary between November 1, 2016 and May 31, 2021, failed to comply with the law and procedure in Section 41 of the Public Procurement Act No. 12 of 2008 and Regulation 64 and 114A of the Public Procurement Regulations Statutory Instrument No. 63 of 2011 in the manner Stand No. 237, which is Infrastructure House, was procured for the Ministry of Infrastructure, Housing and Urban Development from Zamworth Construction Limited, the former Permanent Secretary, was arrested on 30th August 2022 in connection with the procurement of the ministry's building valued at $5.3 million, allegations that the former controlling officer at the Infrastructure Ministry facilitated the procurement of the said building without clearance from the Government Valuation Department and failed to ensure that adequate funds were available prior to initiating the procurement process contrary to the provisions of the Public Procurement Act but appearing before Lusaka Principal Resident Magistrate Sylvia Munyinya, the accused, being represented by Winter Kabimba, pleaded not guilty to the allegations leveled against him. Magistrate Munyinya has since adjourned the matter to 15th January 2024 for mention and on 8th and 9th February 2024 for commencement of trial. Nelson Zulu for Camnet News, Lusaka. Former President Edgar Lungu has filed a petition before the Lusaka High Court to reinstate his benefits as former head of state following his public announcement that he has reverted to active politics. The petition follows the granting of permission to file a petition during the Christmas vacation. The former president is seeking, among other remedies, compensation for the loss he suffered arising from alleged unconstitutional withdrawal of the pension and other benefits as confirmed in the Benefits of Former Presidents Act. Here's a report. We all started from this angle of things. <laughs> Thirty days later, a conclusion was made leading to mixed reactions from the public. Here is, therefore, after careful and deep reflection and wide right consultation, including prayer, following naked efforts by those in power to annihilate the biggest opposition party PF is under today, the PF, using the studies and institutions of governance, I have decided to return to activity. Yeah. But it is back to square one in the courts of law as the former head of state is challenging the withdrawal of his benefits. This is after the Osaka High Court permitted Mr. Lungu to file a petition during the Christmas vacation challenging the state's decision to withdraw his benefits following his political comeback and his petition is seeking a declaration that the withdrawal of his pension and other benefits on November 1st, 2023 was discriminatory, unconstitutional and illegal. The former head of state is also seeking an order declaring that Section 2 and 51B of the Benefits of Former Presidents Amendment Act No. 21 of 1998 are unconstitutional and now unvoid to the extent that they are inconsistent with Articles 20 21 and 23 of the Constitution of Zambia. Further, the former head of state is seeking an order to be compensated for the loss he suffered resulting from the alleged and constitutional withdrawal of his pension and other benefits as conferred by the Benefits of Former Presidents Act. On Thursday, 15th December 2023, government, through the Attorney General, rejected the plea by former Republican President Edgar Lungu to have his benefits reinstated following his public announcement of returning to active politics. Attorney General Mulilo Kabesha cited Section 5 one of the benefits of former President Act 
Chapter 15 of the Laws of Zambia, which prohibits the payment of benefits to a former president who is engaged in active politics. According to his petition filed in the Lusaka High Court, Mr. Lungu wants an order directed to the Attorney General and the Secretary to Cabinet to reinstate the pension and other benefits unto him and order to assign him a furnished executive house built or bought in Zambia by the state at a place of his choice as required by Section 4A of the Benefits of Former President's Amendment Act No. 21 of 1998. The former president is also seeking an order to award him damages for the violation of his constitutional and fundamental human rights to freedom of expression, assembly and association, and not to be discriminated against on grounds, among others, of political opinion and payments in form of interest on the amounts found due and cost incidental to the proceedings. Mr. Lungu also wants an order restraining the Attorney General by his agents, servants and employees from infringing his fundamental human rights and freedom. In the David verifying petition before the court, the former head of state submits that his return to active politics is purely not to become president again, but to defend democracy. Now Sonzulu for Comnet News, Lusaka. Opposition Forum for Democracy and Development, FDD President Edith Nawakwi, has challenged the Republican president to focus on addressing economic problems the country is facing rather than allegedly championing the arrest of his opponents. Speaking after she pleaded not guilty to four counts of a Dactin Feluna and Milton Hatembo. Ms. Nawakwi alleges that the president is fueling for opposition leaders to be arrested. Details in the following report. Opposition Forum for Democracy and Development FDD President Edith Nawakwi has pleaded not guilty to offenses of threatening violence and abduction of Feluna and Milton Hatembo. Appearing before Magistrate Ami Masoja, the female opposition leader denied ever committing the offenses which have been slapped against her. In counts 1 and 2, Ms. Nawaki stands, stands charged with the offense of threatening violence contrary to Section 90A of the Penal Code, Chapter 87 of the Laws of Zambia, on allegations that between 31st August 2021 and September 1st 2022, whilst acting together with persons unknown with intent to cause injury or alarm, threatened to kill Feluna and Milton Hatembo. Other allegations in count 3 and 4 are that on the same date, in Lusaka, the accused, jointly and wellest acting with other persons unknown, in Lusaka, abducted Feluna and Milton Hatembo from Jioma to Lusaka with intent to cause the siblings to be secretly and wrongly confined against their wishes. Magistrate Masoja has adjourned the matter to January 15th, 2024, for commencement of trial. Meanwhile, speaking after the adjournment of the case, Ms. Nawaki challenged Republican President Harai Ndeishilema to focus on addressing economic issues the country is facing as she alleges that opponents to the current UPND administration are being persecuted sentiments the government has maintained to be unfounded. Competition, he, he just is incompetent, that's all. There's nothing you can say about the culture, the economy. There are all sorts of problems in this country that you expect a normal leader to exercise their minds to, not to think that no, Nawaku is still standing, so let me go and put her under lock and key. How many people are going to go to jail? How many people does he want to send to jail except himself? But time will come, time will come. Power by its nature is transitory. What you do to, to others, it shall be done. Now, Son Zulu, for Comnet News. Lusakam. The Kwacha Friday hinted at the 25 Kwacha mark against the United States, its worst in recent memory. The local currency reached its previous worst depreciation mark of 25 Kwacha in 2021, but after general elections, the currency saw some gains which have all been swept away. Economist Emmanuel Zulu says the depreci depreciation of the currency is a reflection of the instability that has been characterized by the mining sector, Zambia's major foreign exchange, ENA. More in the following report. 
The Quach has continued the downward trend, depreciating Friday to a record low in recent memory, selling at 25 Quach to 1 US dollar. The trend depicts failure of the Bank of Zambia's intervention, with the bank in November adjusting upwards the benchmark lending rate or the monetary policy rate, MPR, to 11% from 10%. This effort is also aimed at keeping the inflation rate which now stands at 12.6%. Commenting on the depreciation of the Kwacha economist Emmanuel Zulu says the currency is suffering from instability in the mining sector, coupled with an resolved debt restructuring program. So um, just uh, our the local uh, economic performance in terms of our major forex earning sector, such as the mining, I think uh, we haven't done so well. And this is just a manifestation of what has been happening in the mining sector for some time. So you reach a point where you, are, you just get exposed of what has been happening in terms of our forex earnings. They have uh, drastically dwindled. Mr. Zulu says the situation has resulted in shortage of dollars in the country. As a result, the quarter has continued to bear the pressure. But, uh, we can uh, strengthen our currency. So to some degree, what is happening is, um, uh, is, is unfortunate uh, in terms of uh, tightening the monetary policy because we are also uh, disc encouraging you know, production on the other side because the cost of borrowing becomes high. You have less you know, participation of uh, economic players because of the high cost of uh, borrowing and also high cost of doing business. It therefore remains to be seen what intervention will come from the central bank this time around. But for now, the depreciating of the quacha is being felt among importers, businesses and households alike as price hikes continue. For Kamla TV News, Afia Skaptula, Los You're watching the main news on Kamla TV. We now take our first set of commercials. I will be back with more news after the break. Stay tuned. Potatoes, the unsung heroes of flavor. From crispy chips to creamy mash, potatoes are the versatile superstars of your kitchen. Grown with love by our dedicated workforce drawn from around the community of Palavana. Savenda Farm's commitment is to see to it that we have potatoes that are grown right, healthy, big and tasty. For that quick fix or big celebration or that meal that brings family together, top chefs rely on the Savenda potato to create culinary masterpieces. And for others, it's that icebreaker to a delightful conversation. So. Embrace the magic of Savenda potatoes. They're not just a side dish, they're the heart and soul of your kitchen. Savenda, save nations, develop Africa. Introducing Darren B, a touch of class. Are you looking for the perfect place to elevate your style and glam up? Look no further. Darren B Touch of Class is your one-stop destination for hair and makeup transformation. Walk into Darren B and walk out feeling like a star. Your transformation starts here. Call us on 0772-870-588 or WhatsApp on 0972-049-213 to book your appointment today. Payments are made via mobile money or point-of-sale machine. Strictly no cash payments. We are located along Mossy Road in Ibex Hill, fourth close on the left after Kalikiliki Police Post. At Darren Bay, we pride ourselves on our team of dedicated and trained personnel ready to pamper both women and children. Darren B is open seven days a week from 0720 hours to 1740 hours. From trendy hairstyles and stylish makeovers to flawless makeup, we do it all. Darren B, a touch of class. Water is life. Each drop counts and each must be cherished. Our tried and tested product meets all international standards. With our smart drip technology, we aim to deliver precision irrigation designed to reduce blockage and wastage, ensuring a high yield. Renglow, your smart irrigation partner. Thank you so much for staying with us. We'll now continue with more news. 
Mandevo constituency member of parliament Christopher Shakafuswa says the government has created an enabling environment for the young people, regardless of their educational level, to acquire survival skills, urging the youth to take advantage of the programs. He made the remarks during the graduation of 139 students from IM Zambia Academy as the second group of students under the Taveta examinations since the inception of the school. Mr. Shakafuswa says the Constituency Development Fund, CDF, is a catalyst for empowering young people through the skills development and empowerment component. And IM Zambia Academy Country Dire Director Angela Chansa thanks the government for supporting education through CDF. <laughs> They say education is an equalizer of social and economic status and, and the most powerful tool used to change the world for the better. Hence, many successive government policies on education and skills have been enhanced over the years. Friday, a young Zambia Academy created to offer skills training to the young people in Lusaka saw 139 students graduating in four focus areas being information communication technology, ICT, food production, fashion and design, and cosmetology and cosmetology. Among the students, some of them have been sponsored using the Constituency Development Fund, the CDF resources under Mandevu constituency. Academic Country Director Angel Chansa thanked the government for the expanded CDF which has helped them in realizing their dream of helping the youths become responsible citizens who can contribute meaningfully to national development. Allow me to thank the government of the Republic of Zambia and the UPND under the leadership of His Excellency President Hakainde Hichilema for bringing in effect, the CDF programs and scholarships, as this has helped the organization realize its dream of educating as many youths as possible, so as to alleviate poverty. Officiating the event, Mandevu Constituency Member of Parliament, Christopher Shakafuswa, is happy that CDF is empowering citizens with survival skills. Allow me to join the director in congratulating and appreciating the government of the day through the president of Zambia, His Excellency, Mr. Haga in the Hichilema, for introducing or increasing the CDF fund, which we have seen with bans of educating various youths, including those who've never been to school, those who failed grade 7, those who failed grade 9, those who failed grade 12. This CDF skills bursary is able to incorporate everyone so that everyone can have a life skill. And so I'm aware that we have 139 graduating students today and out of these, 86 are sponsored by CDF. And the Church of Later Day Saints President Chris Chancer pledged the church's unwavering support to the institution. Of education, you can achieve whatever you want to achieve in life. That I can assure you. And the support from the church will never stop. We will continue supporting um, Zambian Academy in whichever way we can not only for this academy, but also the Mwembeshi Academy. That will continue to go. Meanwhile, one of the best graduating students expressed gratitude for the skills acquired. The certificate that we are awarding today is a tool in this world that opens up doors of opportunities for anyone who is lucky enough to have one. Patrick Soko. Come news.
Nalolo Member of Parliament Imanga Wamunyema has praised private universities for the role they are playing in complementing government efforts in the provision of education. Speaking when he officiated at the fourth graduation ceremony for Super Shine University in Lusaka, Mr. Wamunyema observed that for any nation to attain sustainable development, education plays a key role. Details in the following report. Over 200 students have graduated from Supershine University. They march with joy as they offer their fresh services to the society in various sectors. This is the fourth graduation ceremony the university has held since its inception. Speaking at the event, Vice Chancellor Professor Edgar Nyanga advised the graduates to be innovative as they enter the society and be employers instead of waiting on government for employment. The, chance, the Chancellor, sir, allow me to speak about our graduates as we consider the theme study at Supershine to live and save the community. In this year's graduation, which is our first one, we are seeing 280 graduates who are jumping onto the bandwagon of first class alumni of Supershine University, wearing the heart of shining into finding solutions to the betterment of various communities where they belong. This is a milestone score which must be well appreciated by all well-meaning beings unless you are that kind of Judas Iscariot. And speaking at the same function, Chancellor Ambassador Kelly Walubita encouraged the graduates uh, to be solutions uh, to society and not problems. Take this opportunity to recognize those of you who will be receiving masters of education uh, degrees. This is not the end. I want to encourage you to move on and get your PhD. And for this, I want to recognize the only student who this afternoon receive or who will be awarded a PhD degree. Can we please give him or her mm, a standing on And guest of honor, Imanga Wamunyima, encouraged the graduates to further their studies. Mr. Wamunyima, who is also Nalolo Member of Parliament, says education has no age and the graduates must endeavor to upgrade. I would like to extend my congratulations once again as you embrace new challenges and opportunities. Remember that your education equips you not only for personal success, but more importantly for making a positive impact to the world around you. Be catalysts of change and let the values instilled by Supershine guide your journey. Lastly, Marco Kwakozi reporting for Kamnet TV News. The National Patient Scheme Authority has urged employers in the country to ensure prompt remittance of employee benefits. Authority Director General Muyangwa Muyangwa says the institution is targeting zero days in payment of employment benefits which can only be successful if contributions are made promptly. Speaking during the inaugural NAPSA Stakeholders Forum in Lusaka Friday morning, Mr. Muyangwa also urged employees to take a personal interest in NAPSA contributions. Meanwhile, officiating as guest of honor, Minister of Labor and Social Security, Brenda Damba Damba has urged NAPSA management and board of trustees to always make decisions for the benefits of contributors. We have the details in the following report. The National Pension Scheme Authority NAPSA Friday launched a stakeholders forum aimed at enhancing engagement with its publics. Speaking during the launch at Murungushi Conference Center in Lusaka, Friday morning, NAPSA Director General Muyangwa Muyangwa says the forum will be held annually as a means of enhancing credibility with the stakeholders. Credibility demands transparency and accountability. Accountability to the owners of the scheme, our customers and other key stakeholders. Today marks that step in our resolve to end that credibility in the eyes of the nation, our members and our customers. Mr. Muyangwa since called for prompt remittance of benefits 
by employers to enable the authority to realize its goal of paying off benefits as soon as they are processed. We also need the involvement of both employers and members, our customers, in ensuring that all monthly contributions are paid timely. We request our members to take an active interest in their accounts to ensure all contributions are paid and in the correct amounts on a monthly basis. Officiating as guest of honor, Minister of Labor and Social Security Brenda Tambatamba urged NAPSA management and board of trustees to continue to work in the interest of beneficiaries. It also means that your business will operate without any threats uh, and indeed disturbances arising from courts, actions and sanctions. I would also like to appeal to the board of trustees to the board of trustees to ensure that the that whatever decision you make, you do not lose focus of the owners of the funds that you are called to serve. Meanwhile, during the same event, the authority unveiled the 2022 financial report and also awarded individuals and some media houses in various categories of interaction with the authority. For Kamina TV News, Afia Skaptula, Lusaka. Still to come in the news, hundreds of Kenyans trapped by raging floods, a death toll reaches 170. I will be back with the details as well as some sports news. Stay tuned. Introducing Darren B, a touch of class. Are you looking for the perfect place to elevate your style and glam up? Look no further. Darren B Touch of Class is your one-stop destination for hair and makeup transformation. Walk into Darren B and walk out feeling like a star. Your transformation starts here. Call us on 0772-870-588 or WhatsApp on 0972-049-213 to book your appointment today. Payments are made via mobile money or point-of-sale machine. Strictly no cash payments. We are located along Mossy Road in Ibex Hill, fourth close on the left after Kalikiliki Police Post. At Darren B, we pride ourselves on our team of dedicated and trained personnel ready to pamper both women and children. Darren B is open seven days a week from 0720 hours to 1740 hours. From trendy hairstyles and stylish makeovers to flawless makeup, we do it all. Darren B, a touch of class. Water is life. Each drop counts and each must be cherished. Our tried and tested product meets all international standards. With our smart drip technology, we aim to deliver precision irrigation designed to reduce blockage and wastage, ensuring a high yield. Renglow, your smart irrigation partner. Thank you so much for still staying with us. And now, in international news, floods in Kenya have killed at least 170 and displaced more than 600,000 since the onset of heavy rains in November. Tens of thousands of residents in the country's north have lost livestock, farmland, and homes. In northeastern Mandera County, inhabitants call for help. We now have a roundup of African news. Floods in Kenya have killed at least 170 people and displaced more than 600,000 since the onset of heavy rains in November. Tens of thousands of residents in the country's north have lost livestock, farmland and homes. In northeastern Mandera County, inhabitants call for help. While I was running away from the rains and the flood water, I fell down and broke my hand. After this, my family and I came here, the young and old ones alike. Since then, we've been waiting for a solution to this problem. We are pleading with the government to support us. The rainy season, which starts in October in the Horn of Africa, is being amplified this year by meteorological phenomenon El Nino. 38 of Kenya's 47 counties were affected in early December. 
We don't have food. That's our main problem. We don't have mosquito nets. We have nothing to sleep on and there are snakes. We are complaining because there is a woman who gave birth without medical help. And an old woman broke her arm and there was nobody to treat her. When a child suffers, they ask their father for help. We're asking our government for help. Kenya's military continues nationwide efforts to evacuate hundreds of people trapped by rising waters. In affected counties like Mandera, food items are distributed to the displaced. The UK High Commissioner to Kenya visited the county on Wednesday. Climate change is one of the greatest challenges facing everywhere, everyone in the world, but you see it really acutely in places like, like northern Kenya, where the impact on of the drought, with all the livestock dying, and now with the floods on, on people's livelihoods, has been absolutely enormous. So we're committed, as I said, to dealing both the short-term consequences, what can we do for cash grants, food, medicine, and other vital supplies, but how can we build systems nationally and internationally to deal with the effects of climate change. Kenya's meteorological department has warned that heavy rains will continue into the new year and issued preventive evacuation warnings. Supporters of imprisoned Senegalese politician Nusman Sonko are rejoicing. A Dakar court ordered Thursday his reinstatement on the electoral roll, clearing one hurdle of his path to the 2024 presidential election that has so far been strewn with pitfalls. All of us are satisfied. We were expecting the verdict because we know our leader did nothing. He should have been given his eligibility long ago. They delayed things. However, we're still happy. We're satisfied. We're still behind him. And in 2024, he'll be our candidate, inshallah. To run for president, Sanko must file his candidacy by December 26th. However, it is unclear if the administration will accept to provide him with the necessary forms. The state's lawyers could also lodge an appeal before an upper court. The state of Senegal can appeal if they want. It is their absolute right. We know we are on the right path. If the state makes an appeal, we will win it again, because the law will always be recognized. We are in a country of Democrats. I'm not afraid regarding this. Maki Sal is done. He just has to go rest and accept, like Abdullah Wad did when he ceded him power. Maki Sal just has to give his seat to our professional Usman Sonko. Usman Sonko finished third in the 2019 presidential election. His supporters believe that the slew of criminal allegations brought against him since 2021 are part of a plot to derail his political aspiration. Eligible candidates in next year's polls will be announced by mid-January. An exchange of words have taken place between the authorities in Somalia and Turkey over a fatal highway crash in Istanbul. A 38-year-old motorcycle courier died in a hospital December 6, six days after he was hit by a car driven by the son of the Somali president. It was an accident. He didn't run away. He was there until the police come and make every set arrangement. And after the incident, even he was there a couple of days and uh, he hired a, a lawyer for this purpose and he, there was no rest warrant and everything. So he has a business and he came out of the country, but still he's linked to the country and I am talking to him to, to go back and present himself to the court. The decision is his, he's not a young boy that I can the decision is, but I am giving that advice. Turkish authorities ordered Mohammed Hassan Sheikh Mohammed arrested and barred him from traveling abroad, but reports said he had already left by the time. I wanted to take this opportunity uh, to send my condolences to the family, which I don't know how to contact and where to contact. Uh, we share with them the grievances of their loss. We, we're sorry for their loss. I will do everything that I can to make sure that my, bo my son respects those uh, Turkish law and justice law and, and stand in front of the, of, the, of, the, of the courts in Turkey. Turkey has built close ties with Somalia since 2011 when President Recep Tayyip Erdogan, then Prime Minister, visited the East African nation in a show of support as Somalis suffered from severe drought.
In sports news, Rennes manager Julian Statham said he had ridden an emotional elevator after his side had a dramatic late equaliser chalked off in Thursday's Europa League match against Villarreal due to one of football's little known rules. Enzo Leafy's free kick in the 11th minute of stoppage time stuck the woodwork and rebounded back to the midfielder who put the ball back into the box before Lorenz Asinong slapped into the net. Rene's players celebrated wildly, but their joy turned to despair after a VAR check roots the goal out with most in the French stadium believing it was for offside. However, under the laws of the game, Lefi was not allowed to be the first player to touch the ball after he took the free kick. The win saw Villarreal leapfrog Rennes to the top of Group F and directly qualify for the round of 16. Rennes finished second and must now go through a playoff against a team dropping down from the Champions League to qualify. That item brings us to the end of our main news, but before I go, let's take a look at the stories making headlines. Former President Edgar Lungu petitions the Lusaka High Court to reinstate his benefits. FDD President Edith Nawakwi labels the UPND as incompetent economic managers. The Zambia police cautions PF Vice President Given Luwinda against inciting civil unrest. In international news, hundreds of Kenyans trapped by raging floods, death toll reaches 170. And in sports news, Rennes denied late Europa League equalizer due to little known rule. Our verse of the day is coming from the book of Philippians 2, verse 3. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves. Thank you so much for watching. On behalf of the entire news production crew, my name is Sylvia Zulu. Good night and God bless you.